Recording. Yeah. All right. Welcome back to another episode of PK's Lab. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about these 12 channel receivers and why you should do the soft filter upgrade. Sorry, this thing's tiny, hard to see. Whoop. Little can in there. All right. So uh, it's kind of be a shootout like we did the last video. We're going to compare 12 channel to a 12 channel with the saw to a four channel with the saw. And just for fun, the next wave goggle module. And we're just going to look at the adjacent channel rejection of these receivers. I'm doing this as a personal challenge. I want to see if I can keep a video that's shorter than 10 minutes long. So I'm going to stop talking and talk about the setup next. Let's go. Boop. All right. Sorry I lied. Let's talk about what that filter is doing first before we get to the setup. Um, so our receiver, if you got a video signal at 1.2 gigahertz, it gets mixed down to an IF of 479 megahertz. And that's where this little saw filter helps us out. So in the stock video receiver, the saw filter, you can see it here, has a pass band. So the horizontal axis here axis is frequency. The vertical, vertical axis is amplitude or, or how much insertion loss the filter has. So you can see all, all the numbers are negative, which means the filter is lossy even in the pass band. And the, the numbers we care about are the 3 dB point. So essentially the filter is flat and then it starts rolling off. And when that, that roll off is 3 dB or 3 dB less than the pass band, that's kind of a useful figure of merit for our filter. So for the stock filter, we can see the 3 dB pass band is from 466 to 493. And if we put that in our calculator, we get 27 megahertz. Um, so we can improve this by switching to a different filter. We can see the 3 dB pass band on this one is 471 to 489. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. 18 megahertz. Um, and because of our, because the actual video signal that's going over the air is narrower than 18 megahertz, we don't lose any performance. We actually gain a little performance because we're filtering out noise, even if it's just broadband noise in the, in the band. Um, so yeah. All right. Let's take a look at what this filter looks like in our receivers. So I'm, these are just pictures of my four channel that already has the receiver in place or the filter in place. Um, you pop it open. That's the receiver module and you can see it's the can right here. Uh, it's good to have an extra blob of solder on the top. Don't heat these things up too much though because the, the actual crystal in there is sensitive. Also don't drop the crystal. Um, it's got, you know, a little tuning fork like thing in there. Um, they are pretty sensitive, so be gentle with them. Um, and this is what it looks like on the bottom. It's a three terminal device because it's only a single channel. Um, some of them have four pins. Just note the orientation of the little tab. Uh, you can see it's down on this one here. So when you remove the old one, put the new one in in the same orientation uh, and you should be good to go. Uh, a trick you can do to you can take a piece of tape and uh, like a high temperature tape and put it to the top so as you're unsoldering the bottom you can use it to help you pull the saw filter off and then you know put the new one back in so all right let's do a little shootout action let's talk about the setup we got our device under test our calibration plane is over here we've got two signal generators coming into our power divider slash combiner. Um, the video output's going to our monitor, which our USB camera's taking a look at. Um, so the two signal generators, one of them will be our desired, the roadie up here. Um, we're going to stick to minus 90 dBm, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. And then our interferer is going to be adjusting up and down, and we're going to put them on 1258, and the desired is on 1280. So I'm up here. Or upper right hand corner um, that's the USB camera that's looking at the screen and this is the video source up here um, so why did we pick minus 90 dBm for our desired signal well you can see we're just starting to get into the static so it's this would be not fatiguing to fly but kind of where you'd want to you know like eh, maybe I probably should turn back or something um, so if I turn it down by a couple dB 
And again, you can keep an eye on the power level there. You can see it's starting to get fuzzy get down towards all black and white and then won't lose sync. Yeah, this monitor does blue screen, um, but I figure it's easiest for me to set it up this way. So there you go, minus 90 dBm for our desired. We've got a spreadsheet in the lower left-hand corner that's going to kind of catalog what we're doing here. Let's see if I can get everything to fit in. Yep. So we've got four devices under test. The first one will be our 12-channel digital display that has the 28 megahertz saw. Uh, then we'll do a 12-channel with the 18 megahertz saw. Uh, then a four-channel with the saw, and then a next wave goggle module. So let's get rocking. So I've got this guy. We're going to start at minus 90 dBm. He's doing an, a one kilohertz FM uh, deviation. Sorry, six megahertz deviation, one kilohertz tone, and it's going to be at 1258. And we're going to crank up the power step by step, and we're going to start looking for when the video gets distorted. So it's minus 76. So we can turn it on and off. This is the RF on and off button. So this is kind of where your neighbor would start interfering with you. So let's record that number. And let's swap to the next receiver. We got the remedy made unit, 12 channel in the house. Let's get attenuating or let's get cranking. All right, we'll call that minus 55. All right, let's put in the four channel and see what we get. All right, got the four channel in. Oop, probably shouldn't have started there, but saves us time, right? It's about the same. We'll call it. Minus 56 or 57. Let's see. Yeah, 56. So within the margin of error there. And last but not least, let's get set up with the Fat Shark module. Okay, all plumbed in. Let's get dancing. So you can see it actually comes down a little earlier, a little more subtle. This guy. So about the same. Minus 56 dBm. So there you go. So what does that mean to us? So basically, swapping out that saw filter, if you look here, uh, in the lower left hand corner where the spreadsheet is um, you're essentially getting a 20 db improvement in the amount of adjacent signal that you can reject and that is a lot um, so general rule of thumb is when you double your range your distance um, it's a 6 db delta in signal strength so if you had an unmodified receiver and when you started seeing interference, a person was like 100 meters away from you. If I'm doing my morning math right, I think that means that it'd be they could be up to one tenth the distance from you before you start seeing that interference. So that's a pretty sizable improvement, um, especially when you think about how we fly in groups on a flight line and you know, everybody's packed together and you could be off in the distance and somebody else could be launching right next to you. Um, so I'm going to actually pull up the web page on digikey real quick so you can see where you can order it you know it's not going to break the bank there's the part number 279 in quantity one uh, i'll put a link in the video description so yeah hopefully this is helpful it always feels like these uh different frequency bands go through different uh, levels of popularity and i 
I kind of feel like one three is coming back. Maybe it isn't. Who knows? Uh, anyways, hopefully this is useful. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.